Dear colleagues, sutureless and rapid deployment valves are valves that need a limited number or no sutures to be implanted. The sutureless and rapid deployment aortic valve replacement international registry is a registry led and run by surgeons that, independent from industries, was established in 2015 to evaluate short and long-term outcomes of this valve technology. Globally, the registry involves 18 centers from 8 countries with pre-operative, intraoperative, and post-operative data being obtained for nearly uh, 5,000 patients. Among so many options for valve replacement, what is the role of sutureless and rapid deployment valves today? This is uh, not an easy question to answer, but I try to elaborate on this topic using results generated from our registry and from other groups. Why using uh, sutureless and rapid deployment valve today? To facilitate minimal invasive AVR, to shorten CPB and cross claim times, because they are associated with excellent hemodynamics and because they can be of great help in patients uh, showing challenging anatomical uh, settings. Sutureless and rapid deployment valves and minimal invasive cardiac surgeons, uh, surgery. Uh, every day our patients are strongly requesting less invasive procedures that uh, have to be associated with the reduced trauma and the faster recovery. So there is no doubt that cardiac surgeons, if they really want to remain key player in management of patients with valvular heart disease and remain patients interlocutors, well, they have to develop and disseminate minimal invasive techniques to treat valvular pathologies. However, notwithstanding favorable results, the penetration of minimally invasive AVR in the daily clinical practice remains disappointingly low. In 2014, the German Society of Cardiac Surgery reported that only 20% of all AVR interventions were performed with minimally invasive techniques. And in 2016, this percentage increased only to 28%, less than one third. This is uh, mainly due uh, to the perception of an increased technical difficulty and prolonged operative duration of minimal invasive aortic valve replacement. Well, sutureless and rapid deployment valves, due to their simplified and shortened techniques for valve implantation, can strongly facilitate and support the use of minimal invasive techniques for aortic valve replacement. So this is a, a transaxillary approach we're working on for minimal invasive uh, AVM. So while these um, uh, operation with this approach can be performed and we've been doing with sutured valves, well, there is no doubt that this operation can be greatly simplified using sutureless or rapid deployment valves as we're doing uh, in this uh, uh, case. So sutureless and rapid deployment valves at our departments are one important component of uh, a 360 degree concept, concept for minimally invasive valve surgery where all the components, incisions, valves, extracorporeal circulation and anesthesia are interpreted in a minimal invasive uh, direction in order to improve clinical outcomes, faster recovery and increase patient and family satisfaction. When we look at data from our registry, we see that minimal invasive cardiac surgery in our experience represented the primary indication to the use of sutureless and rapid deployment valves with almost 75% of isolated AVR being performed through less invasive uh, approaches, a percentage that has increased to 85.5% in recent years. As you can see, minimal invasive uh, sutureless and rapid deployment AVR showed promising results also in a series of 63 patients undergoing a reoperative AVR. A major benefit of less invasive access in the redo setting is that adhesion dissection of mediastinal tissue, tissue is minimized and therefore the risk of cardiac surgery or graft injuries as well as the risk of bleeding may be substantially reduced. So we had no conversion to full anatomy and we had no in hospital debt on this um, small series of redo minimal invasive sutureless and rapid deployment AVR. Moreover, the increased rate of minimally invasive AVR in our registry did not translate into considerably prolonged CPB and cross claim times. Here you see how CPB and cross claim time after minimally invasive AVR with sutures and rapid deployment valves are clearly lower than CPB and cross claim times after full sternotomy AVR as reported by the SDS and Gary registry, meaning that rapid deployment valves may overcome 
the main limitation of v of mix, which is long operative times, and that if you go minimally invasive with switch less and rapid deployment value, you will not save only 10 minutes, but certainly more. And we know, we all know that prolonged CPB and cross claim times are strong predictors of mortality and morbidity in cardiac surgery. So as a cardiac surgeon, we should do all our best to keep this duration as low as possible. Accordingly, reduction in operative times may become very relevant in some selected patients, such as those undergoing combined interventions carrying serious comorbidities, such as advanced age, impaired left ventricle function, peripheral vasculopathy, renal insufficiency, and so on. Sutureless and rapid deployment valve are associated with superior hemodynamics compared to conventional valve. And this is both true for the intuitive valve. This is a randomized multicenter trial um, from Michael Burger and others showing that uh, intuitive valves were associated with um, lower mean transvalvular gradients and the lower prevalence of patient prosthesis mismatch compared to uh, sutured uh, prosthesis. And this notion is also supported by this recent study from the Korn Group, which shows Edwards' intuitive performance was superior to Edwards S3, so to Tavi, especially for the smaller size. This notion is also confirmed for the Percival valves. This is a meta-analysis study showing that hemodynamic from Percival uh, is, is superior than hemodynamic obtained with the conventional situation valve, even though oversizing should be avoided with this valve if, you, if we really want to run away from undesired ingredient, uh, increased gradients. So, situless and rapid deployment AVR can be a favorable solution to treat patients with uh, aortic stenosis and uh, small aortic annulus in order to reduce the risk of uh, patient prosthesis mismatch. This uh, was confirmed in a recent analysis from our group in which hemodynamic performance and clinical outcomes in patients with small aortic annulus, the S group, were compared with those who had the larger annulus, the L group. The prosthesis size did not affect patient clinic outcomes and the risk of severe PPM was lower compared with standard valves. I would also strongly consider a sutureless or rapid deployment valve in a patient like this one, a man, a 73 years old man uh, who presented to us with a heavily calcified omograft. In this setting, as well as in the case of redo intervention in patients with native root calcification, freestyle root calcification, or stainless valve degeneration, uh, sutureless and rapid deployment valves may be resolutive, while both conventional and catheter-based intervention can be highly uh, problematic. And here we are in the operative theater with the patient with a heavily calcified uh, omograft and a severe aortic regurgitation. We are uh, resecting the valve here. We decided to treat this patient by implanting an Intuiti rapid deployment valve. And this was really uh, a simple uh, solution to a complex uh, uh, problem. You see the valve that is uh, seated down and deployed. Only three switches have to be tied. A perfect result. But what are the results with the um, switchless and rapid deployment valves? Uh, in our registry, we enrolled uh, about 5,000 patients from 18 referral centers. Uh, the mean age was uh, 76 years. Uh, we had uh, about one third of patients being aged more than 80 years. These patients carry uh, a significant burden of age-related comorbidities, so our population was an increased risk population as demonstrated by a logistic hero score of 10.6%. Uh, uh, in about 70% of cases, a, a Percival S valve was implanted in about one third of patients uh, implanted an Intuiti. However, consistent with the current worldwide trends in conventional surgical AVR, a change in patient characteristic has been observed over time, as indicated by a significant decrease in the estimated surgical risk of our study population. This phenomenon seems to be due to the increasing use of sutureless and rapid deployment valves in always younger subjects, both in the isolated and combined subgroups of patients. 
Data from our registry show that both Percival and Intuitive Bounce yielded a high technical success rate, and this rate significantly improved over the study period from 95.5% to 98.6% as a result of the growing experience of surgeons and refined surgical techniques. However, it should be mentioned that valve malpositioning emerged as a strong risk factor for an hospital mortality. It resulted in considerably longer CPB and cross claim times and a greater incidence of post-operative complications such as low cardiac output syndrome, respiratory failure and dialysis. So, despite the increased risk profile of our study population, uh, we had excellent clinical outcomes. Hospital mortality was 1.4% uh, for isolated AVR patients, it was 3.5% for combined AVR patients, and overall mortality was 2.1%. Moreover, the registry investigators demonstrated that such as a rapid deployment AVR is associated with satisfactory outcomes in patients of all risk categories. These results compare favorably with those reported in conventional surgical AVR registry, which were clearly presenting with a more favorable risk profile. The evidence um, regarding Sichelis versus suicide valve outcome is weak and mostly generated by small single center studies. There is only one large comparative study from the Gary uh, registry. Uh, these studies show that Sichelis valves do better than Sichelis valves as indicated by the lower rate of major stroke, new pacemaker implantation, and transvalvular gradients, mean transvalvular gradients, uh, greater than 20 millimeters of mercury. But let's look at the Gary Sutureless population and our uh, international registry uh, population. Let's try to make some uh, observation. 1,021 patients for the Gary registry, uh, more than 2,300 patients for our international registry, uh, there was a clear difference in age between the two study population. The Gary population was much younger, 75 years was the average age. They had no octogenarians in the International Registry uh, study. The mean age was 77 years, and you see that more than one-third of patients were aged more than 80 years. And that obviously resulted in a significant difference in the estimated preoperative um, risk of death, uh, it was 6.6, .6, the logistic euro score in the Gary population, it was 11.7 in the international registry population. And despite uh, such a strong difference in the preoperative estimated risk of death, hospital mortality was 2.2% for the Gary patients, and it was one4 for the international registry population. And that hospital mortality decreased to 0.8% if we look uh, only at the low risk subgroup of patients. Stroke was similar, and the similar was the need for new pacemaker uh, implantation. But it should be noted that the data from our registry also are indicated improving outcomes of over the study period. The stroke rate declined from 4 to 0.5 percent, likely as a result of the decrease in age and in estimated surgical risk over time. A clear learning curve effect may explain the significant reduction of post-operative aortic regurgitation and pacemaker implantation, which was 5.9 in the latest phase of the study period, not far from what we have with suture valve. Simple techniques modification of suture rapid deployment valve implantation techniques may have contributed to this finding. In particular, a careful avoidance of valve oversizing and low valve positioning are crucial to prevent injuries of the, conduct of the conduction tissue. It is also likely that need for pacemaker implantation can further decrease in future if we learn to select surgical valves based on preoperative ECG something that we already do for the TAVI and we should also do for the, for the suturless and rapid deployment valve. This is our experience on 253 consecutive low-risk mini AVR patients, 103 received a suturless or a rapid deployment valve. Well, you see that pacemaker implantation was higher in the suturless group compared to the suture one, but that was strongly dependent on the presence of preoperative uh, right bundle branch block. 
The pacemaker implantation rate was 57% in patients with the right bundle branch block, and it was only 3.6% if, uh, if the right bundle branch block was absent. Uh, but before I approach my conclusion, let me do uh, a very few considerations about age limit for sutureless and rapid deployment valve, which have, of course, a lot to do with the follow follow-up data and risk of intervention. Why there are some long-term studies uh, showing excellent durability for both the Intuiti and Percival valves? In this slide, you see on the left side the study from Vienna group reporting a seven years freedom from structure above the generation of 95%. And here a study from Leuven showing a very limited number of reintervention at 11 years with the Percival valve. It remains that long-term data on sutureless and rapid deployment durability are not robust yet. And one should keep in mind that if catheter-based RT valve reintervention are feasible, safe, and associated with clinical uh, and uh, hemodynamic outcomes that are comparable to valve in valve in conventional uh, sutured heart valves? Well, this seems not to be true for conventional intervention that may be often challenging and risky because the prosthesis can be embedded in the aortic wall and annulus. So it is for this reason that probably this valve should not be used, not yet, in the very low risk and younger uh, patients. So with more than 4,500 patients enrolled, the Sutureless and Rapid Deployment uh, uh, International Registry is currently the largest uh, and the only dependent registry on this valve technology. Uh, data from our registry suggests that uh, Sutureless and Rapid Deployment valve AVR is safe and effective alternative to conventional AVR with promising clinical outcomes. Our registry demonstrated remarkable improvements in clinical outcomes with a significant reduction in the rate of stroke, pacemaker implantation, and post-operative aortic regurgitation over time. So what is the role of sutureless and rapid deployment valves in the current days? Uh, in my opinion, is that of being a surgical valve that one should keep in consideration uh, to, in selected patient to facilitate minimal invasive AVR, to shorten CPB and cross clamp times, uh, because they are associated with excellent hemodynamics and because they can uh, represent a very simple solution in patients with the challenging anatomical uh, uh, condition like those uh, I've shown you earlier uh, with um, calcified root or homographs. Thank you for your attention.